Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the fourth workshop in the De Broglie series, Academic Libraries Reimagined, um, which we created to foster the knowledge sharing within the library community. Today's session is entitled Space Planning in the New Normal, and uh, will support your own library's developments um, with a collection of best practices and successful redesigns of library spaces that meet the user's needs. Um, before we get started, there are a couple of um, house rules I would like to point you to. Uh, you will have noticed your video and audio have been muted, and as for all attendees, but please feel free to um, write your questions into the chat box. Um, there will be time to answer your questions after the presentations. Um, the, the presentations um, and this event is 60 minutes long, and we will record it. So you will receive the recording alongside the slides after this event uh, for you to reread and please do feel free to share it with your colleagues. If any questions haven't been answered or we don't have much um, enough time, then please um, um, do email us after the event. We're really happy to help you afterwards as well. So very quickly, I would inform you for the next event that's already coming up on the 17th of November. Please put it in your diaries and the topic there will be technology empowering libraries and making it real. So before I introduce to you the lovely speakers today, um, can you all hear me? Caroline, I didn't even say this at the beginning. Yeah, Andrea, we've, we've had a bit of chat. This, um, the participants are hearing the echo, but I've just explained we've tried to do something about it, but not been able to. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I hope you can hear me enough. Is, is it OK? Yes. Yes, OK. Well, I introduce to you today um, our speakers um, who will present today. We have with us Caroline Williams, who is responsible for leading the University of Queensland Library, um, where she draws particular focus on enhancing the student experience. She will tell us all about the Library Spaces Master Plan project she's managing for the university. Furthermore, we welcome Foster Zhang, the Library Director at Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Hello, Foster. Um, who is responsible for building integrated and inspiring learning spaces within the library, uh, creating easy access to research content and nurturing the culture on campus. With that, I will now pass over to Caroline to start our presentations. Enjoy. I will stop sharing this, Caroline, and share your. Thank you, Andrea, and wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, um, good evening. It's great that you could, could join us. Um, Foster and I have a real challenge um, in being able to say everything that we want to say in 25 minutes. So, so here we go, and apologies if this is, this is very fast for you all. I'm going to, I'm going to cover um, about four things, but it's the last thing that's the biggest here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start off by saying something about the University of Queensland and our libraries so that you, you get an overview of that for those of you who don't know us. And then um, move on to touch on our COVID experiences and particularly how that impacted on our thinking about spaces, library spaces. Then I'll, then I'll share with you um, a bit about our space developments before moving on to talk um, for a bit longer about the, the library master planning project, which is a significant um, piece of work that we've undertaken very recently. Okay, so, so let's go to the next slide. And um, this, is, this is the slide that um, gives you the overview of the, the University of Queensland. And we're in we're in Brisbane in the in the northeast of Australia. We're a very big university. We've got over fifty thousand students. We um, pride ourselves on our campuses, but of course the COVID experiences mean means that we've started to deliver much more um, online. We are a research intensive university. And we're a big library service. We've got eight libraries across three different sites or campuses. 
And here's, here's just some of the stats from 2021. So you get a real feel for it. Um, and 6.3 million people through our um, library doors. And we um, provide an awful lot of support, which spans the student experience and research experience. We've got big collections, digital and um, print. And we have, um, we've had over the over recent years, we've done a lot of work to consolidate our print collections so that we can increase our number of study spaces. So where we sit right now is about 4,300 study spaces, but we still estimate that given our student numbers, we need about a thousand more. So if I go, if that's set in the scene, I'll, I'll move on next to um, orientate you to our COVID um, experience um, here in Australia. And the first thing that I share is um, a quote from one of our students about 18 months ago, who said that he really, really appreciated the libraries staying um, open and really valued that he had somewhere to go amongst the, the difficult times in, in COVID. And I want to say that I'm, I'm really pleased that we were, for the most part, able to, to keep our libraries open. And all those students who needed a, um, a good access to the internet, good air conditioning in, in our climate, um, uh, and kind of a safe environment, a safe private environment to, to go and study in. We, we were able to support that. The, um, the experience here in, in the northeast of um, Australia um, has, has been um, that we had some, some kind of short, sharp lockdowns. Um, but as soon as the state could be opened up again, or the, the Brisbane could be opened up again, um, and our COVID numbers were such that the, um, the Premier felt able to do that, we were able to do that. So, so our experience compared to rest, the rest of you in other parts of the world, um, I count myself really lucky. I'm going on next to the, the next slide, and, and this is a summary slide of what students have been telling us recently about what they want. And um, I'm going to say something about this now in the context of COVID, but then um, say a bit more about it later. So where I want to draw your attention to is the quote in the bottom left hand corner there, where students started telling us that they needed a different kind of space to engage with um, Zoom seminars and Zoom lectures. So somewhere in between the quiet and the noisy spaces that also offered privacy. So I'll move on now um, and give you an overview of, of two of the big initiatives um, that we undertook pre-COVID to set the scene. So our, our focus before COVID was on, on all of these things, improving the student experience, um, thinking about where our collections were, what we were doing on the uh, ground floor levels of our, our libraries and improving that. And we made some small improvements and we made some big improvements. Um, but the, the other thing there, and it's at the bottom of the list and, and it speaks to the image there, we have been really unlucky. <laughs> We've had um, two small fires in recent years and one fairly significant flood of one of our libraries. So in those kinds of situations, it's, it's really difficult to pick yourself up to um, work with colleagues in um, property and facilities and to, to redo what was actually a pretty, pretty good study space as a result of flood. The next, next I'm gonna talk about a very, very positive development um, and it's on, on the next slide. We have a main campus, St. Lucia, but we have other campuses and, and one of them is the, the Gatton campus. And the library there um, going back pre 2018 was in, in real need of redevelopment and the investment was secured from the university and um, new study spaces uh, created and the whole the majority of the library redeveloped to create a space that was so much more attractive than it, it was before light filled with with great views outside 
improving the way to navigate around library buildings so to be able just to wayfind and, and see um, through buildings in a way that um, opens them up rather than closes them down so that was that was the the Gatton library extension and refurbishment which we completed in in 2018 and if you'd like to see more pictures of that just just go to the UQ library website the next one that we did on the, the next slide was one of our biggest libraries, the central library on our St. Lucia campus. And here you see it was a refurbishment of two floors. Here you see some of the things that have been, uh, become standard across library space developments all over the world, I think. You see these wonderful stairs that are designed for students to sit on and congregate on. And they, they absolutely love them, sitting there with their laptops and sometimes even lying there quite happily and quite comfortably. And you see these, this mix of study space as well. So these study pods, study rooms, study desks at different heights. And if we go to the next slide, um, this, this was in direct response to, to what students had, had told us, that they wanted more space, they didn't want to be crammed in. They wanted more PowerPoints, more computers, flexible table options and seating, and more quiet spaces. So that still comes through for us, quiet spaces. And then that's all, that's the list of all the things that we've, we've delivered. And the next slide, if we move to that, this is the this is some of the feedback that we've we've got, which was uh, wonderful on one side. So all the things that the students liked, and the things that they didn't like, they told us about. And um, for those of you who've been involved in new library developments, as soon as these growth spaces open, they get full, and everybody wants wants more. Um, and then there were a few other things there that we didn't get right, right at the beginning. You know, we, we forget the smells matter to the students and the environment has got to be right in every possible way, whether it's lighting, whether it's desk, whether it's sound, whether it's smell. So that was a stark reminder when we got that feedback. Okay, so I'm, I'm moving on now to get to talk about this big master plan project. So, so we've done those a number of developments and um, we've got eight libraries. And what we found was when we looked at um, other library developments around the world, and here are just um, three of my favorites. So the, the University of Aberdeen in, in Scotland, uh, the Sir Duncan Rice Library, there's the Chinese University of Hong Kong, the main university library learning garden, which is a wonderful example of how you can get um, light in into an underground space. And then um, in, a, in America, the North Carolina State University Hunt Library, which is a wonderful example of a, a really technology rich library space. So we could look at all those things and still think, yeah, we've got more work to do at um, the University of Queensland and um, more inspiration from, from other university libraries all over the world. So despite our developments, if we go to the next slide, we still felt that we had um, a range of issues. So this variable condition and in inconsistency, so some great spaces and some spaces that, that weren't so good. Um, we were seeing investments in, in schools, in secondary schools um, in the area and thinking, yes, some of our libraries um, don't create an environment on a par with the libraries from the secondary schools that future students would be coming from. We'd been opportunistic about securing funding for different projects as well, and that meant that this added to this fragmented nature of the quality of our spaces. We have this, this ongoing demand for more spaces. We are also really, really concerned about the environment that our collections are housed in, particularly our special collections. We operate in a very humid part of the world here, and mold and temperate and mold is a risk, and keeping the, the temperature right for our special collections is, is another risk. And um, the other thing that um, will probably come, come through more as we talk today is, is the costs here. 
When we looked at um, doing another library development, we actually found that the estimated costs um, that we had when we first started talking to the university about it, when we got into the stage where the architects took a good look and carried out a feasibility study, we found that that doubled. So we started to realise that in, to bring the rest of our libraries up to the same standard as some of our best, it was going to be it was going to be really expensive so we needed to work out um where was the best place to put the university investment in terms of um uh, future developments but we also had some other strategic questions and if we go to the next next slide um i think when i run through these questions they won't surprise you so of course we were thinking about what's the impact of covid on our, our library space what the students and staff need now and one question that was answered um there really really quickly that question about whether um the demand for study space would be as high as it was before covid and we found straight away now that we're fully opened up that yes it's just as high so the demand is there and and so it's about what's the the right balance of study spaces in libraries compared to what's provided in terms of informal study space in our schools and faculties, and what's the right ratio there. Um, we're really concerned about students and their feelings of isolation and um, how COVID had an impact of that. And we wanted to think about how can we use library space redevelopments to um, really bring that sense of belonging back to the student community as they come back to the university. Of course, we're thinking about technologies and um, everything from virtual reality to data visualization and what kind of facilities and technologies do we need in our library developments? And you know, what else is going on on our, our campuses that we can, can think about the libraries differently in, in relation to that? And at the simplest level, that could be, OK, are the locations changing for the, the cafes, for the food and drink? But more, more complex is, is thinking about kind of disciplinary communities um, and um, how library, the location of our libraries sit with particular faculties. And does that have an impact on, on how we redevelop that particular library? So they're the strategic questions we're asking ourselves. And the next list I have for you is the sense that there are so many opportunities here. We know that students um, find libraries really motivating when they make a decision to go to a library for a, for a day or in between seminars or labs or lectures. They're making a decision to study, so it puts them in the right, right mindset. We also know that students want loads of choice um, we've got different needs in, in different campuses. So um, moving straight down to point six there, our health science campus, Hurston campus. There's great opportunity there to think about the library as bringing communities together beyond the university community. And then the next point there is, is, is really thinking about those, those points about technology and how we fit with other developments on campus. So the master plan was to, to look at all the opportunities, all the strategic questions, all the challenges that we have, and, uh, and also to look at all the great things that have been happening already at UK libraries, but also elsewhere in the world. So the, if we move to the next slide, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about um, how we went about the master plan. Well, first off, we certainly didn't do it ourselves. We, we worked in partnership with our uh, colleagues from property and facilities, and also, also many others across the university, which I'll say a bit more about. Um, but we had um, a consult, uh, an architect consultant who worked with us, who are absolutely wonderful, and so Hassel Studio. And you can look at their, their website, and there's lots of information there that that um, around the research that they've done around learning communities. And the, the project was, was really thorough. So it looked at every space and assessed every space, looked at all these opportunities, and it ran for, for eight months. And the, the Hustle team worked really collaborative, collaboratively with us. We also had very senior um, buy-in to this master plan project. 
We have the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic Chair, the Project Control Group or the PCG, and we also have senior members of the University Senior Team on that group, which was um, really helpful in terms of um, getting a shared understanding of what libraries can bring to the university and also helpful in terms of the stakeholder engagement and reaching out to, to key groups across the university to get their input. So that's that's where I'll go next on the next slide and just give you a, um, sum, a summary of the first the methodology. And um, you'll see in uh, section two there that cons consultation figures um, very strongly. But we started off with the inspection phase, which is all the ideas, all the um, kind of thinking and, and research. Then we got into consultation and um, imagining the future before the Hassel team worked up different options for us. So they, they um, developed three different options for each library. And each of those options had um, a different cost associated with them. And what we had to do in the project control group is look through each of those costs, uh, costs and options to establish where the best value for money for the university would be. And then the master plan was drafted. And then there was a whole um, range of other consultation before the, the master plan was finalised a few months ago and um, presented to the university senior executive team. So if I, if I move on now to the next slide, it, it, it just gives you, um, this, is the, this is the summary of the, the engagement and the groups that we had. I do want to draw attention, for, for those of you who um, live in um, Australia or know Australia, you'll know that um, we have um, a real path to, to travel in terms of reconciliation. So with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island First Nations people to really understand and, and work with them to think about how these um, universities are like ours, which have been de developed as um, kind of a legacy of colonialism, um, how we can make these, these buildings, these spaces, these campuses more welcoming, more open to um, our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander staff, students, colleagues, and, and community. So that was a big driver for us to, to understand that. So, so lots of engagement there, plus elsewhere within the university, including with um, library, library staff. So of, of all of that engagement, um, I wanted just to share a couple of, couple of bits with you. So the next slide, takes you to um, a, some of the highlights for our engagement with our academic colleagues from the, the faculty. And talking to them about spaces, we, we found that um, the conversations got much, much bigger than that. And uh, we talked about print collections, we talked about library services, we talked more broadly about the, the role of, of libraries. And, and what we found was a whole, whole range of needs and um, a real commitment to the student experience and what libraries could bring to the student experience. And we did find that there were differences in thinking between our academic colleagues who work in humanities, social sciences, business and law, compared to our academic colleagues who work more in sciences and medicine. So we've been mindful of that, thinking about the, the development of different library spaces, depending on where they are in terms of location of disciplinary communities or campuses. So that's the snapshot of um, what academics want. And the next slide takes us back to what students want. So I showed this earlier and drew, drew your attention to the left-hand corner. Now, just to, to take that more broadly, what you see here is that students are asking for a variety of spaces and telling us that it's, it's not just about personal preference and they're going to select a space that they're going to feel comfortable with and want to keep returning to. They're actually saying it's different at different times as well. Um, there's also a big theme here running through. It's, it's not just about quantity of space, it's about the quality of space. So sound, acoustics, noise leaving, you know, all those things are important to our students. So if you move on to the next, next slide now, um, 
of the the master plan, the um, there's a whole host of vision, aspirations, experience, principles included in it, and the full document is over a hundred pages. And what I'd like to share now is just a snapshot of that. And this this is one of my favourite bits, favourite five points around our aspirations for space. And for me, they capture some vision. They catch, but they also are quite pragmatic. So we want to optimize our space. We're concerned about placemaking and belonging to students. We want to be open to the, the whole community. We want to deliver value for money in any investments. And we really want to provide the right spaces that support our students in whatever way. So next, next slide takes us to you know, the, the kind of conclusion of the, the master planning work which is really those tough decisions about an investment strategy. So as I said, you know, for each of our libraries, there were three tiers of intervention considered, and we had to look at where the, the most value would be gained. And actually, it ended up being fairly simple. It's where the most students go for us. Um, and so the proposal for the, the first projects focus on um, some more big library spaces on our main campus. However, we don't forget our, um, our other campuses and particularly the, the health um, precinct and the opportunity there for development which really aligns with the strategic ambition for the, um, for the university and that we can be just part of that as the library. So finally then, um, by way of con concluding remarks and the, and the next slide, this whole master planning exercise, it's been big, but it really has been invaluable in giving us a full and holistic picture of library provision at UQ, which enable us to inform and put forward appropriate business cases for, for future developments. And with that, I have to say that we believe that there is so much that can be done um to respond to increasing student expect expectations and their changing needs and this master plan with its over its 10-year increments we believe is going to really help us be consistent and um, find those high quality um, opportunities to deliver great environments for um, on-campus focus productivity discourse and discovery Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And yes, please, we're going to have questions at the end, I think, but please, if, if there's anything in chat, I'll be really happy to respond to that. Thank you. And back to you, Andrea. Well, thank, well, thank you, you so much, Caroline. Caroline. That, that was fantastic. fantastic. Really, really great, great insights and learnings there. there. Um, I start sharing now. And as we said, yes, please do write your questions in the chat box. We'll, we'll try to come to them after or we will try to do it in the background as well. So, so do, do keep, keep them coming. coming. I, I stop sharing and Foster will start sharing his presentation and we move on to the next one. Thank you, Caroline. Right, Foster, over to you. Okay. Okay, can you see the slides? Uh, not yet, but yes, we are. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's my turn. Okay. Yes, it okay, is. Okay, uh, <laughs> so thank you for a uh, great uh, to invite to to uh, organize this uh, webinar and invite me to uh, join. And we really appreciate the uh, talk Corona just did. And uh, it is a good example to show how a library can do with the limited resource and making so many changes to, uh, to its users. And I'm going to using uh, my uh, time to um, just very briefly summarize what I have done with uh, several libraries I have been working with, and also share some uh, field trip as a uh, IFLA uh, library buildings and equipment uh, member. Uh, we, we saw lots of libraries and share some uh, good examples with, with, um, uh, with, with your audience. Okay, so library is always a symbol that represents the value of our life. And uh, um, but uh, the life's changing, so um, there's uh, several uh, facts uh, to force us to make changes. So when it's the academic library, um, the, the university higher education has changing. 
So as uh, parents' company changes, the library's rules change. The other type is media and uh, information technology. And uh, also we are ma pay much more focus on users' uh, needs to the library. And last, we'll briefly touch to the IFRA LBE's activities. Okay, so first about my library, um, by, sorry, by um, my university. And I joined this university in, in uh, February this year. So it's just uh, three months ago. And uh, uh, Hong Kong UST is, uh, um, is a very good university in Hong Kong and uh, it's uh, kind of new. It's only 30 years old, I believe. And uh, um, with this new university, we, we try to do is, uh, you, if you see the slides, you can see the green uh, half circle. So on the uh, left side, that's what we call the uh, interdisciplinary uh, program uh, office. We try to uh, break the bondage among the um, schools. So we try to make uh, uh, students, faculty, engineering, science, Humanity, social science, and business, they can work together to have uh, new programs for our students. But apparently, it's not working very well because uh, the existing organization structure will limit this kind of inter interdisciplinary activities. So, we decided to have a new university, which is on the right side. We call it CUHK Guangzhou. We're making the whole campus under interdisciplinary program and uh, making all the faculties working under the hub, we call it. So it's, it's uh, like function hub, the systems hub, society hub, information hub. So this change completely um, making the universities uh, in different uh, running mode. And this is also a challenge to, to the libraries. Okay, here is a brief, uh, uh, my history. I start working with uh, uh, library building issues uh, in uh, Shanghai, Shanghai um, Tech Universities. So the, uh, you, you see the beautiful uh, library images in the, in, on the top. And uh, my uh, second library uh, building experience is with, with uh, CUHK um, Shenzhen. And uh, uh, the library looks like an open book standing there. That's all the uh, architect understanding about the library anyway. And so the bottom one is the library I'm currently working on. It's not built, it's, it's still under construction. It will be open in uh, September this year. Okay, let's look at like the, what, what, what's going on in the past. You know, the library has been changing a lot, but it used to work very well. See, see the picture, you know, uh, publish, publish books and the library getting the books and uh, doing a cataloging and uh, uh, some, some guides reference service for making the book available to the research. And there is in turn to write papers, give the publish. So the communication channel goes, uh, goes around, and it's very stable. And uh, this is uh, another uh, a picture of the uh, library reading room, you know, under that kind of uh, scholarly communication. It's working very well. I still like the picture very much. You know, I really miss that, uh, that uh, uh, situation. Now everything changed, okay? Uh, first of all, the media change. So we, we have uh, electronic books, journals, databases, and the library service in turn has to provide, instead of uh, circulation of uh, physical books, we have to give a uh, uh, guide to the e-resource, we have to even give uh, uh, data or tools to our users so they can do their, uh, do their uh, work. At the same time, social media, Google, you know, these kinds of uh, things pop up. It is really making our use in these stages that each body, each person can get information from totally different places, different channels. So they need a place to talk, to share, to determine the information they got is right or it needs to be followed up. It's something to, uh, it's a good idea to follow up. So they need this kind of space in the library. So that's a whole changing force behind the, the library space business. And here's an example, uh, I, when I'm working at Stanford uh, University, we have uh, uh, an engineering library. That in, uh, it's about 10 or 12 years ago. That, that, that was a new library. So the, the head of the library uh, clear, uh, declares that they were going to have a first uh, pure electronic uh, library. So we will, will not have any uh, printing books. 
But these ads, you can see from the picture, we still have a few um, menus, uh, tool books, you know, uh, a few, but most shelves have been removed. So internally, we got lots of uh, open space. We can put the reading tables, uh, reading tables in. But from what you see in the picture, nobody come to the library anymore because for engineering students, you know, they got all the information from, you know, electronic databases. You know, uh, they feel that the traditional library setting will not need their uh, need anymore. They can read information in a classroom, in laboratory, you know, at home. Why do they have to come to the university to, uh, I mean, come to the library to, to do the reading? So at the same time, I think the uh, Stanford University did a very good job to uh, try to uh, uh, making changes. So uh, the, the left side, uh, the right side is the documents I still have to copy. It indicates in 10 years ago, it says, library will foster a sense of community. I think at least the key word is community. The library is no longer only dealing with books and periodicals or databases. We need to focus on our users. So that's uh, probably the uh, biggest uh, changes to, uh, to, to, um, to the library management. Um, okay, so this picture shows that uh, it's last week, I believe. Uh, Perkins Wheel, a uh, uh, design, uh, really de design company, they created this uh, apartment together with a library. So I think that's a great idea because, uh, you know, the library is going to be a zero dis distance to your life. When you step out of your apartment, you're in library. So uh, I think it's, it's very, it's, it's another good example. The library is much more close to users' life than it used to be. Okay. So um, here's a few pictures of uh, uh, location information beneath. That is, uh, we can see the university space looking at feel is totally different. Okay, we have a more open space, we have high shielding areas, we have much uh, better lighting, and uh, we, we have uh, students very active in the space because it's designed for them. You know, uh, people can use the same space doing serious study or group discussion, or even some social activities, even some hands-on uh, work. Um, so I took a few uh, uh, comparison to, to show that uh, building styles change. So in the past, on the, um, on the left side, we see the traditional library. We have uh, uh, books, uh, shelves around the wall. Then we have uh, people study in the middle. Then on the right side, we see that in Chicago, they, they have this complete open design. So the natural light is coming everywhere to the, to the space. So, um, we call this like uh, in the traditional library, the knowledge is kept by the wall. You know, people are inside, they just copy information, memorizing. But for the new space, we want people to use information in the space through discussion, innovation, thinking, or study to create new knowledge. So that's making the library space much more relevant to, uh, to the user's uh, uh, life and uh, um, increase the value. So this picture shows the entrance to the to a library. So on the left side, we know it's the Library Congress. You know, people has to go, go twenty steps out up to, to into the library. So other, the other one you can see is on the street level, people just can walk in, and the design is, is much welcome feeling to our users. It's easy to come in. There's no barrier. You know, you come anytime. You can do everything, anything you like in the library. You know, so it's a from entrance has difference. Also, the staff working space has been changed. You know, we used to have a counter. The librarians, the staff was behind, sitting behind the counter, waiting for people to come to ask questions. And uh, on the right side, we see uh, this is the Greenspan uh, uh, Square Library. I really um, admire their design. They put all the surveys. Um, heavy activities in one place, like self check in, check out, new books, exhibition, just return the books and the uh, uh, reserve books. And also in the past find the way like, like people goes upstairs, have to go through that area. So we can have a librarian working around the area to offer help, okay? Not waiting for uh, staff uh, users come to counter to uh, 
work out. Then this is another uh, picture in comparison. On the left is also a library congress. And uh, on the right side, you can see this is much like a shopping mall style. When you go in the stairs, you see everything around you. You don't need, you don't need directions. You can see you know, where the discussion room is, where is the you know, general reading room is, and where is the reference section. So this is something we, when we create a new library, we need to think about it. You know, how to make use uh, you know, like back home, you know, they actually under their control. They can, you know, manage doing things they like to do. And this uh, is talking about the styles. Um, so the Library Congress on the left and on the right is uh, Johns Hopkins uh, University and uh, Broadly Learning Commons. Uh, when I work, working there in uh, 2013, I even helped create Google Indoor map for the library. So if you're using the uh, cell phone, you can find your location and your uh, direction to the, to the bookshelf or whatever you want to. Okay, so with the open space design, uh, another important uh, thing we need to pay, pay attention is the acoustics control. Because the uh, open space making the sound travel much easier. So we need to consider you know, uh, for example, to have a classified areas, certain area what we will define as a very quiet traditional reading area. And some area we allow small talk and in certain area like uh, meeting rooms is, you know, you can just talk like normal. Um, also furniture also plays important roles here. So much more loose furniture has been introduced into library space than the office, office uh, furniture we used to have. So this, this type of furniture to enable, to enable our users doing their activities, like small talks, small chats, like uh, doing a citizen help work, organize a small uh, table for, uh, you know, for activities. So the furniture is either uh, lighting or with wheels can move around uh, by, by the users. Um, also, uh, uh, as Carolina mentioned, the powers, Wi-Fi, all this stuff, and also, also for the for the desktop, we need to provide even sometimes even uh, more than one monitors for users to use, they, because they need such uh, equipment to help their studies or researches. Um, so also, I believe in public library, um, the Fab Lab has become very popular. And for the engineering uh, university library, and we start to uh, also try to making those equipment available to our users. But there's always uh, arguments says we have engineering school, we, we, we have a professional lab. Why, why your library has to have this? But I still thinking, you know, say, uh, hands on, or if you do something uh, by yourself, it will help you to understand subject understanding, open your view, making you more confident, confident doing things. So I still think library needs to have some kind of, uh, um, you know, 3D printing, 3D scanners, even for people just doing something like for, for their own interests, but make them to do things is much more help than just reading books in the, in, in the reading room. And uh, I also uh, get this quotation, uh, you know, design library space for you users today means embedding digital service in physical space and uh, creating interactive, engaging library services. So um, think about it because the digital information without good display device means nothing to our users. They need to see you know, what, what the presentation is, how the data can be compared with. In this case, we need uh, lots of uh, display technology to help us. And, and in some situation, we need to making this device available for, uh, you know, for user to control, to making uh, uh, operations. Okay, I think the time is uh, go very quickly. Um, so the, I, this, the picture I'm following is, is my, uh, is the library I used to work is for uh, CUHK uh, Shenzhen. And uh, um, so for this library, um, 
you can see that we have the book, uh, bookshelf walls. And I can tell you, you know, very embarrassed that uh, some books on the shelf in the high places is, is, a, is a fake book, it's not real books. Okay. But uh, we try to create some, uh, you know, some environment, some, uh, some, some, some situation like, uh, you know, living room, big living room at home, you know, people can sit there just uh, doing, doing talk and uh, use, use lots of uh, natural lights uh, and uh, making the shelf and the reading area mixed so people can, uh, you know, have a feeling to uh, still appreciate the printed books. And the equipment is much, uh, much more needed these days in the library. So we have a uh, uh, user-driven digitization station. We give them very high quality scanners. So they can scan uh, general articles themselves, send to their uh, personal device, so they can read on the bus or somewhere. Also for the technology room, we have uh, this uh, um, cooperative study uh, facilities. You can do small group study. You can use the several group together making a classroom teaching. And the cell, the science cell is also very uh, welcome when you try to make Zoom meetings and uh, you know remote interview, phone calls. You know, in, in the general open area, you can find the one and just get in to do your things. And the last one is with the smart library development. We have this uh, uh, robot. You can do the inventory the shelves during the night. So the books on the shelf match what people see on the, on the computer. There will, there will be no more missing books request. And this is another library is called United International College in Zuhai. It's, it's a, also a university. And uh, uh, the picture I use here is try to show you guys that with a little bit design, it can make the library so attractive to, uh, to, to its users. Just see the inside, outside, look in, look out. It's, it's beautiful. And also, I think the last point I try to make is the outdoor space is a key library assets. Especially, uh, Karana just mentioned the COVID situation. You know, sometimes the open area is much safer than the you know closing area inside the library. So we need to use it to make the out space use, useful and uh, making that integrate as part of the library offering. So uh, you know, we can put uh, a big, maybe a big uh, LED screen outside, making Wi-Fi covering uh, nearby areas, making the open space under the uh, shadow so people can sit there uh, to do their own things. And uh, uh, even like uh, this one for Shanghai Library, they, they're making this uh, um, interesting windows to making outside um, you know, view integrate with inside. So inside in that area is the real book section. Okay, I'll come back now, now talking about the uh, IFRA library building and equip, uh, equipment section. I joined the, uh, this uh, community um, in uh, almost four years ago. And uh, we did a lot of things. So uh, underneath we see these two books published by um, by the same publisher organized today's uh, uh, meeting. Uh, so those, these, two, these two books is open, open license books. You can download freely from IFRA uh, website. And uh, besides the publication, we also uh, organize webinars. And the last year we, we have five in series. So I give two examples on the, on the top. So here is uh, uh, our uh, it's a URL for our library uh, section, and you can go there to read more about our activities. Um, besides the website, uh, we using social media like uh, YouTube. All the past seminars about the library building space is is there, so you can go there to review the recording, and uh, we also using the uh, Facebook. Um, to facilitate a uh, great audience for uh, sharing and discussing contribution, contribute ideas. It's open to everyone. And uh, we also have uh, um, Twitter, Twitters. And uh, we, uh, the last one is uh, uh, Instagram. And 
if we will have an e-square account, I will encourage you guys to go there because every almost one or two weeks, we will introduce a beautiful library samples with furniture, space, introduction for the architecture. And uh, um, I hope we can see you join IFRA uh, conference this year in Dublin, which is uh, 2020. I think I save some time for discussion. Thank you so much and uh, welcome you to join and ask questions. That's all. Let me stop sharing. Thank you so much, Foster, and thank you. Of course, we will see you in Dublin. Thank um, you. Yes, so we've got to loads and loads of questions. Thank you so much. Um, and Caroline has been very busy answering Thanks. most of them. Um, I think there's, I can see a couple, um, one probably for you, Foster, here, but I think Caroline has already answered some. Will robots be extended to do shelving of books as well as shelving, shelf reading? Uh, I, I think the shelf, put books on the shelf is much difficult operations. You know, I believe the robot will be developed in the future, have such intelligence. But at the moment, it's only uh, doing the uh, shelf reading to make sure the book on the shelf matches what's on the computer. Brilliant, thank you. And a very interesting uh, thought here, students like to eat and drink in libraries now. How do you incorporate Ooh. that into your design uh, projects? Uh, it's very good questions because I, I'm the one to introduce free coffee in the library. That's going wild. And uh, <laughs> uh, so, so, uh, so many students come in, they enjoy the coffee. They just come for the coffee and then go to class sometimes. You know, we 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 did, did ask people to contribute money. You know, to put a few money in the in the in the cup, but it's all, uh, nobody monitoring that. And some people are thinking, you know, if you can offer coffee, that means I can eat something, right? So they start bring uh, juice, you know, Coca Cola. So at one point, we have to stop that because we have to maintain the library's environment as a, a for study mainly. Yeah. And uh, this needs education. I think the faculty, all the students, is very good. The problem is like first year uh, graduate, undergraduate students, they, they, they just want to try these different things. Yeah, it's, it's challenging, it is challenging. Yes, I'm sure it is. Caroline, do you want to say anything too? Yeah, I, I, think, um, I think that's, um, I can remember at the start of my career, that kind of eating and drinking and asking people to leave libraries who were eating and drinking. And I think maybe 10 years ago, we gave up and uh, just accepted that as students are studying for long periods of time, that, that they, they need to drink in libraries. Where we, where we draw the lines at, at UQ tend to be around um, smelly food and around special collections. So, so anything that might uh, potentially damage yeah. um, any, any of our, mm. our really amazing collections or mm. uh, Thing that's going to disrupt disrupt the environment for um, the other students. But I have to say, as part of the master planning project, there were one or two students who asked, uh, who talked about Uber Eats and could we have a better drop off point. So that um, I think that's the next thing that we're going to have mm -hmm. to to deal with. And for that, then it's it's about making sure our bins are emptied regularly. That mm -hmm. you do. Have kitchenette facilities where that that kind of eating can be yes in a library but not in a space that's going to um, interrupt the ambience of the study that's happening around it. Drone, yeah, yeah, drone, <laughs> drone. Someone came up with a great idea. Delivery by a drone. Yes, yeah, I'm sure yeah. it's very important for students. There is one question which I feel has maybe not been answered: the solo study problem um one student mentioned is a tough one what kind of spaces can re uh, really provide what they need when they uh, we can't promise their items will be secure yeah and and i think somebody responded in yes somebody did and yeah i think to date we've kind of used the um lockers and okay. book spaces with spaces underneath but that whole security of, of people as well as belongings is is something that um, has been really on my mind recently. And I think, 
you know, in, in the trends, particularly that Foster showed, you know, of opening up library spaces, they do, they do many things that are great in terms of visibility and wayfinding and everybody being able to see each other. But then, um, you know, there's this behavior then that, that can lend it so everything's too visible. And, um, you know, what's, what, what is great on, on one hand can, can make people and their belongings uh, vulnerable on the other. So that that I think it's a real challenge for us that one that we we haven't quite got right yet. Yes, yeah, so we 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 put a notes on each table says um, remember this is still a public uh, space, so uh, you know don't don't leave your variables on the table without attend attended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I mean. Um... Someone said I was asked by a student this week to mind their things while they used the bathroom. I yeah. think that says it all. Yeah, so it's very important to to deal with this. Um, mm -hmm. I feel we haven't got much time. I don't know whether anyone has another last question or two. The rest of the questions have been answered by Caroline. I feel. Thank you so much. Um, but if anyone has, you have the. You know, if you don't want to ask questions now, you can always email us afterwards and we can just take this discussion further. Um, sure. I think this is maybe all we have time for today, but I will send the slide deck and also the recording around and then anyone who has any questions can can email. Um, Caroline and Foster, thank you so much for this taking your time and to share your knowledge and experience and all your learnings that they were really great presentations and I'm sure that we certainly got some food for thought uh, in these presentations. Yes, so leaves me to say thank you everyone for their time to come and join us and I hope, I'm sorry about the echo, I will sort that next time. 17th of November, put it in your diary and we will be in contact. Thank you very much. Thanks, Foster. Thank Caroline. Have a fabulous afternoon everywhere you are, and we will speak and see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.